Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Everyone, welcome. Surah Rawal, <laughs> chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, we'll be covering today. These are the references, and this is our contact in case uh, there is any question or query on this video. Overall perspective of this surah. The Quran has related details about the harnessing of nature with great frequency and repetition. From this, there were two objectives in view. Firstly, man in his age of infancy had accorded a divine status to the manifestations of nature and declaring these to be gods and goddesses, and he worshipped them. These beliefs are also deeply rooted among Arabs. The Quran stated that these forces of nature do not possess divine power. These are all engaged in the fulfillment of the program defined by Allah. Next is, secondly, these forces are busy in action according to defined laws. The potential to understand them has been placed within man, and whichever nation acquires knowledge of these laws will harness these forces. So, Quran has uh, pointed our, direct, our, our attention towards the external universe quite a lot, and this is in that context. As a result, Adam will become deserving of prostration by the Malaika. So in case we harness these forces of nature, then these forces will be uh, under our control and we can make use of them. Next is Raad. The name of this uh, surah is, the meaning is thundering of clouds, is also included among these malak. So this is also included in the forces of nature. The word Raad appears in verse 13, 12 in this surah, from where this name has been given to this chapter, and also in verse 219. The following two verses also give great importance to this surah. The first one is Inna Allaha la yugayyiru ma bi in hatta yugayyiru ma bi anfusihim. This is in, in verse 11 of this chapter that Allah does not change the state of a nation until they change what is within their own self. And uh, in next uh, presentation, we'll go through that in more detail. The next verse is Amma ma yanfau nasa fa yam kosufil arde. That uh, what is good for mankind that remains on earth. Again, we will discuss this in, in our uh, one of the presentations. And this is verse 17 of this chapter. We will cover these in detail once we arrive there. Now, we'll go to the first and second uh, verse. The book points to signs for the use of intellect. Alif Neen Ra, Tilka Ayatul Kitabe, Wallazi Unzila Alaikam, Rabbik Al Hakku, Walakinna Aksara Nasila, Yumin. The proclamation of Allah, all knowing, all wise, and all nourishing, is that these are the verses of the book of Allah, the Quran, i.e., the laws of that divine code which are sent down to you via Wahi from your Rabb, and which is absolutely based on Hak. But despite this, most people do not accept Iman. The second verse is Allahul Nazi Rafa Samawati Begare Amadin Tarawnaha Summa Stawa Alal Arshe Masakara Shamsa Wal Kamara Kulun Yajri Le Ajal in the Samma Yudabirul Amra Yufasilul Ayate La Allah Kum De Lakai Rabbekum Tukin. I have highlighted uh, in red some of the points which need uh, our attention. This is from that Allah who has suspended such gigantic stellar bodies in the heights of the heavens. And as you can witness, there are no columns quoting these. So the Quran says that you can see all these stellar bodies going around, uh, uh, following certain laws, but you do not see anything physical in between them which is holding it. It is solely his law of gravity on the basis of which these are established. Because the central control of authority is in the hands of Allah. In the same way, he is holding the sun, the moon, and everything in the chains of his law. All these are going in their orbits. Each one of them is continuing to follow its orbit for a specified time. The next one is in this way, the all-encompassing law of this Allah manages affairs in the external universe. That same Allah explains clearly and explicitly the law of his according to which man should live his life so that you can gain certainty of this fact that you too have to face the same law. You cannot escape it and run away anywhere. Now, 
let us look at some of these points in slightly more detail. Why does the Quran state that most mankind will not accept Iman? Now, if you remember, this point was also uh, pointed out by Dr. Hamid some time back that this is something which we need to pay attention and try to figure out that why did Quran say state like that. So what I've done over here is I have also commented on that, but I haven't taken it right to the end and uh, we can discuss it further. The Quran has stated a number of times that the majority of mankind will not accept Iman or have knowledge or manifest their best potentials or reflect, etc. This point needs a careful consideration as it may be construed that we do not need to make any effort to pass on the message to everyone in the world as they are not going to listen to it. What is the point when Allah has declared it emphatically in the Quran? That if we say that Allah has said that moon, they are not going to make an effort, are not going to go for acquiring more knowledge and, and the knowledge of Wahi, then what's the point of worrying about that? At the same time, the Quran has also declared that the deen of Allah is going to overwhelm all human systems in the world. How can this be possible if the majority is going to reject it? So these are the points which need our careful reflection. And I'm sure this will come up again once we go through the Quran in more detail. In verses 83, 1 to 6, the Quran has stated that the time will come when mankind will rise up in favor of the system of Rububiyat and go against the man device system and its injustices. If you remember one of the verses, uh, which is the sixth verse, they say, Yawma yukum nasu bi rabbil alameen, that mankind will stand up, they will rise for the system of Rububiyat of Allah. So that means at that time, the most of uh, mankind will realize that what is happening in the world is not acceptable. However, this rising up is not possible if the majority remains ignorant and does not acquire Iman in the system of Rububia. So this is an important point, which I thought we should uh, look at it in more detail. May not be today, but in subsequent discussions. We try to interpret these verses in the light of our present day world in which the message of the Quran has not been spread to the whole world. Only a tiny number of people know this reality. When we say the message of the Quran is not passed on, it means not explained to them as an alternative system to man device systems. So it's important for us to know that what people, there are a lot of activity going on in terms of reading the Quran. Good, they are looking into it. But most are not looking into the Quran with a view to replace the man-made system. They are looking at solutions within the man-made system. And that is where the difference is. We have also not created any model state in which mankind could witness with their own eyes the benefits of such a system which takes into account the needs of the physical body as well as that of the self. So this is an important point and we have gone through it before as well. We know that ourselves need to understand the Quranic concepts first in order to explain these to others. So if we ourselves do not understand them fully, we do not comprehend it fully, then we cannot explain to others and to appeal to their rational side. So in order to appeal to their rational side, our own rational side must be extremely well developed. It is only those who have read Alama Prevails who have grasped how the system of Deen and Rububiyat works. Otherwise, most people read it purely as a religious book. I put it down over here, uh, according to my own understanding, that uh, I've read extensively and except Alama Parvez, nobody has touched the system of being the way he has touched it and explained it. Such people do not as yet understand the system of being as they do not look for it. A time may come in the future if these conditions are met that the majority will understand the need for the system of being. Maybe it happens during our lifetime or in the lifetime of our children and grandchildren. Further reflections on verse 13.2. In verse 13.2, after drawing our attention to the outer world and its functioning, an important fact is noted which needs our close attention. We open our eyes in a vast universe whose limits are unknown, and even on planet Earth itself, on which we live our physical life, there is so much to learn and discover that one limited lifetime is not enough to explore even what is so far no. So this is another point that sometimes we feel that uh, those who read a lot and try to figure out what's going on even in, in today's world, 
we think that we need probably another few lifetimes before we come to grasp to a lot of issues which we are facing in this uh, life. But that is not the point in front of us. If we look at the development of the self, that is where the answer lies. The Quran draws our attention to the potential expanse of our intellect whose domain of consciousness is kept undefined. No limit has been placed on our abilities to think and reflect. So Quran does not say that this is your limit. You cannot go beyond that. The Quran has all along invited us that if we use the Quran, the, the expanse of our intellect and consciousness will keep increasing. And we have discussed it previously as well that exactly this consciousness is going to go with us into the hereafter. Here the Quran first offers a tiny glimpse of various physical signs, for example, stellar bodies orbiting without any visible sports, balanced laws functioning in the universe, the sun and moon orbiting for a defined duration of time, thus pointing to the finitude of all that is physical, including our body. So finitude is the one which should keep it in mind, that this universe has a certain time limit and the time limit on our body is very, very tiny. Next, that part of the verse appears before us, which is for the domain of our intellect and its potential of being inquisitive. Yudabbir al-Amra. Here Allah has noted that we are in the domain of khalq. That is, we are living in the domain of khalq, and this domain of khalq has been created from the domain of Amr by Allah. While all is being directed from the domain of Amr of Allah, where decisions about creation are made prior to these entering the domain of Khalq. This point has already been touched as well previously. But over here, it's good to remind ourselves. This domain decides everything. For example, what is to come into existence and function in the physical and non-physical aspects of creation relating to us, i.e. human beings. We need to come to grips with this aspect in as much detail as possible during our lifetime as this is how we will achieve that conviction through which we will comprehend the functioning of this human world of parts. And then the Quran says, the next part of the verse is, that all these verses are explained so that you are convinced of meeting with, with your Rabb. And I will explain it slightly later that the Lakai Rabbikum Tukinun that you have that assurance, that certainty. And the word, the attribute used over here is of Rabb, which is related to Rabubiyat. And Rabubiyat is very much related to this world. And this point also was discussed by Dr. Hamid in one of his previous presentations. And this will lead to understanding the realities of life, leaving us in no doubt that our life has a purpose and that our Rabb exists. The purpose of human creation as its destination. So we know that when we talk of Rab, it means the one who takes us from our point of initial birth, our starting point, to the end point or to our destination. And in the case of man, we know that it is there is no end specified by the Quran. We will keep living our life in the hereafter at the level of our consciousness, at the level of our self on Sirat al -Mustafi and encompasses all human thoughts and matters. The next is verse 754 has summed up this aspect by saying, Allah We can look at this verse in the Quran. Please note that by pointing our attention towards khalq and amr, because over here Quran has said that, Allah has said that khalq and amr both belong to Allah. And then mentioning two divine attributes of tabaraka, and we know that this is from there a calf and this roof indicates that something which is growing at its place and is also well established and is balanced. And Rab means Allah has invited us to think profoundly on the purpose of bestowing us with the faculties of intellect and reasoning. So these are the things which need our very careful and profound attention that exactly what is the purpose of my existence. And the more we reflect into it, the, the areas uh, of, of the Quranic teaching, these expose themselves before us in more detail. Next is, Yudabbirul Amra Yufassilul Ayatil Allahkum Delakai Rabbikum Tukinun. On this, we have some more reflections. The first one is the Quran has drawn our attention to many aspects of creation which are related to the domain of Amr. In the domain of Talq, 
domain of talk is the one in which we are living this presentation i'm going i'm giving you in the domain of talk we see creation based on evidence but do not know why it has been created in this way and could there be another way of creating it so over here we see everything the laws are working but we don't know why it is created like this that could human being be created something different from the way we are and this is something which which does uh, these questions do arise in our mind particularly those who think for example why is a human being created in the way it is and could there be another way to do this in the physical world we are already creating by putting together various combinations with the things already existing in the world however none of these are in themselves of any use in the life of the hereafter because the non physical self is going to go in the hereafter so whatever we are creating here using our intellect and reasoning powers is going to stay behind in this physical universe but the way in which you employ these in the domain of values that has an impact on the hereafter to ourselves so what is important is that how do we use these things which we invent and build and create over here so that is the thing which we have to keep it in mind this part of verse that is 32 deals with the human self and its understand here the quran has first stated the way in which if all these signs in the world if pondered upon should lead us towards two aspects so what i have done over here is i have uh, try to crystallize two important aspects out of this verse firstly to become acquainted with all aspects of rububiyyah which is declared to be the equivalent of knowing rab so over here what quran is saying is that this is how if you want to see rab this is the way bring establish the system of rububiyyah at first stage is to understand it and then establish it and then you will be meeting rab coming face to face with the reality of human creation and existence and its connection with allah as ra so it is not what likai allah it is that is not what the quran has said it is likai ra so it is very much connected to this world that is where we are living i e an infinite self serving serving as a model for the lower self of each one of us secondly through this process of living our life in this world within the permanent values to achieve that certainty which is explained in the quran we need to figure this out by following iman and saleh deeds and of course this also includes the the functioning of the law of requital as well that whatever we do we will meet the consequences of our deeds the latai rabbikum tu kanun this also means to witness the functioning of the law of requital and to never be in any doubt about it. and we cannot be in doubt if we pay attention to it and whatever we do and if the results we can see being imprinted on ourselves as well as in the world around us this can only occur by visualizing both the physical and non physical side of it this is how we clearly recognize the importance of quranic guidance and reach this conclusion that we can become eligible for the help of allah if the path of religion is followed now we go to the next set of verses which is 3 and 4 planet earth is made for the extensive use of intellect and reasoning first verse is wa huwa allazi madda al-arda ja'ala fiha rawasiya wa anharan wa min kulli samarati ja'ala fiha zawjain isnain yukshil layla laylan nahara inna fi zalika la ayatin liqaumi jata fukkaru i've combined it with the next verse as well the kitaun mutajawiratun wa jannatun min anabin wa zar'un wa nakhilun sanwanun وغيره سنوان يسقى بماء واحد ونفصل بعدها على بعد في الاقل ان في ذلك لا ايات لقوم يعقلون just consider how his law of rububiyyah is functioning in the universe he has spread it out despite the earth being spherical in this way so that you can inhabit it easily and made mountains in it and initiated the system of rivers from them and produced varieties of pears of every fruit in it and defined such a procedure that is the rotation of the earth that through this the darkness of night covers the light of day how many great signs of the harmony of our law in these matters for those who reflect and reason it's an amazing universe in which we are living from a physical point of view despite we having certain problems of related to our physical existence we can see that how much the whole creation is precise 
then also reflect on this that parts of the land are contiguous to each other but in these some have gardens of grapes some have fields in some places there are date farms so over here quran has drawn our attention to agriculture and plants and and all those uh, trees fruits orchards some among these sprout from one root and then separate and some grow independently from their own separate roots all these are irrigated for example they are all irrigated by the same water but bear different fruits and one has a certain property while another has some other property in this way each one has a distinctiveness over another so see how much variety is there but even more than that is that he has allah has given us certain abilities where we can appreciate as well for example taste we can express it it's the fragrance we can we can express it animals can't do that for those who use intellect or reason there are great signs about our system of rububiyat in these matters also so for us is that how do we relate it to our own existence and to the development of our own self human intellect learning need to grow beyond own self interest so over i have noted down some of the points from these verses continuing from verse 13 to the quran invites our attention to our nearer physical world of providing means of sustenance for life in general and human life in particular i e only we can make sense of it animals cannot do this as they do not have intellect or reasoning potentials and do not possess choice and intent hence no self so developing this potential to draw our attention towards this creation in the outer world and trying trying to figure out what is in it for me and for mankind is part of development of our potential it might look that oh we are obviously know about it but knowing deliberately about it and pondering over it repeatedly is a good way of bringing best out of us here one important point is about the creation of serial time which is the changing of day and night i.e. the alteration of day into night which is not only for reminding us that our physical existence here is finite i don't know how many how many of us are fully aware that every day when we get up we say another day is coming and another day has gone but uh, and that will put some kind of emphasis on our deadline that is our death but as numerous other signs attached to it for example the spectrum of sunlight and its supply its application and benefits the benefits of nights for example nights of for sleeping as well and also our brain needs rest and all these there are plenty of youtube videos on that that what is the effect of night on our body and what is the effect of different parts of daylight on us then our attention is drawn to the arrangements for making clean water available throughout the earth and from this water producing all kinds of vegetation and crops for human use attached to this use are the values related to the system of rububiyya both verses are concluded with very interesting over here inna fi zalika la ayatil lil qaumi yatafakkarun very intense reflection uh, human beings need to look into these verses and second is inna fi zalika la ayatil lil qaumi yaqilun those who use their intellect who do not leave intellect just for uh, living day to day at animalistic level i e if we just observe these signs and means and live like and live life like animals by using these at individual level then what is the difference between humans and animals all this availability of resources has to be organized managed and utilized as per the direction of rabbul alamin if not then this self will never come into existence within us for the development of which allah as rab has invited our attention now i have over here drawn a schematic of our self to reflect and do something about it first one is universe is created for man we know about it this is a famous picture taken from google next is earth follows laws and water cycle is one such process out of many others next one is in physical domain man is continuously creating on the planet we have seen technology everywhere and of course not everyone is benefiting from that technology most of the poor in the world do not fully really benefit or benefit or appreciate the benefits of this technology now we have created this imbalance man without what he creates imbalances and we see these imbalances all around us in every sphere of life in every part of the planet 
And then over here, I have taken this picture. It's quite interesting. This is the rich world. These human beings sitting over here exactly are thinking like these people because they are human beings. They are equal human beings. But they are ignoring these because they create them. So this is the poor part of the world. And human beings think and reason and are equal. Hence, inequality is growth, injustice. So that is something which we have to continuously think. We are pointed to these points previously as well. Next is creating poor first and then helping them is hum humiliating and gross injustice. So whenever we see people who are equal human beings like us and sitting and begging and are homeless, our mind must go in this direction. It costs nothing, but a, a thought in this direction will help to understand the problem. And there's a lot of talk of altruism for our own uh, emancipation and for our own sal salvation, which is the core of uh, all religions of the world. With all the work in the name of altruism, poverty keeps multiplying. And this is something we should question. We should think about it. Next is, it is really confusing. Now, this person looking at it from this side thinks there are four logs here, and this one some thinks it is three over here. al haq never changes and is given in the Quran. So there is nothing confusing in the Quran. Quran shows us the reality the way reality is. And finally, my choosing and deciding yes or no is my will. A person consists of these three parts. Of course, there is more to it, but I thought this is quite interesting. I found it and built it. Emotions, my feeling, sad, glad, mad. Intellect, my thinking, knowing, and reasoning. Three components of a person. If anything we do individually or collectively hurts the feelings of one innocent human being in the world, this is zone. So that is the that is I thought is interesting. That we should be fully aware of our own consciousness. How are we thinking? How are we acting in the world? And what can we do at our limited level with our limited resources to enhance our own perceptions and our own. Uh, the, the sphere of our own understanding. Now, verse 13, 5, which is the next one, we should reflect on the law of creation. When Tajib, Fajabun, Kaluhum, Azakunna, Traban, Anna, Lafi, Kalkin, Jadi, Ulaikal Lazina, Kafaru, Birabbehim, Baulaikal, Aglalufi, Anakehim, Baulaika, Sabun, Nare, Humfiha, Kalidu. Despite such numerous signs of the law of creation and nourishment of Allah, O oh man, if you wish to hear something strange, then these people say that when we become dust through decomposition, then will we be reborn in a new form? So this is something, a big question mark on, on each human being that what will be the form of the next life and will we be able to get another life once we are dead physically? When our brain dies, we should essentially be dead. The fact is that these people who think that the life of a human being is only this physical life, there is nothing beyond it, deny the law of creation and rububiyat of Allah. They think there is no purpose to human life. I have read extensively uh, uh, of many thinkers, particularly in the West, and they all think there is no purpose to human creation. Barring few who, who, also, who also use some kind of a skepticism or suspicion or doubt. Because the very meaning of a rububiyat is to cause something to reach to the final point of its completion, and the last point of completion of a human being is not his death. Next is those who say this are the ones who are in chains, in ignorance and worship of forefathers, because it suits them. If we start thinking of the hereafter, then we will have to hold ourselves accountable, then we will have to do something about the team and the scheme created by the system, we will have to challenge the wrong system as well. And we will have to come to the Quran, come together and make a lot of efforts and then go towards the system of deen and it all need challenges. And whereas if we conform to the majority, then we don't have to do much. Just be a beneficiary of the capitalist system and just uh, live your life uh, as it comes. In such a way that their vision simply cannot reach far. They simply cannot make use of broader perception and wider knowledge. By denying the expanse of life, these people do not harm anyone else. Over here, expense of life means that life is not just living day-to-day -day basis at an animalistic level. At our consciousness level, at the level of our intellect, life is far, far bigger than what it appears to us at any point in time. Because it's the same life which is going to expand further, widen further, 
in the hereafter. Instead, by burning their own pastors of the future in this manner, they make a heap of ashes in such a way that no possibility of development remains in, in these. So when Quran says, Wa sabun narim fiya it is stating a fact and telling us that if you do not uh, act within the values of the Quran, if you do not seek this guidance when it comes to you, then you are essentially forestalling the possibility of further growth. Through the obedience of Wahi, we become free, all chains removed. Now, what I have done over here is I have taken a verse from uh, Surah Al Araf 157, very famous verse. Allah Zina Yattaweuna Rasulan Nabi Al Umi Al Lazi Yajiduna Hu Maktuban in the Hum Fit Taurate Wal Injile Yamuruhum Del Marufe Wa Yanhaum and Il Munkar. So over here what Quran has said is that this law of arts was also made available via previous Ambiya and now this very law has arrived through this Rasul therefore now our Rububiyat and Rahmat will become the share of those people who for the establishment of the system of Rububiyat will follow behind this Rasul who was before the Quran Ummi. And this is also 2948, we can look at it. Whose signs, Jews and Christians are found noted in the Torah and Bible. He gives instruction on those matters which the Wahi of Allah acknowledges as correct. So Wahi of Allah is a knowledge. It's an external knowledge as we know. And human beings do not have the ability to find out what is given in Wahi, but we can understand it. And forbids from those things which are not acceptable according to this Wahi. Through this very Wahi, he declares all niceties of life as halal and declares impurities as haram. Details covered under 6146. And this is the reason for which I quoted this verse. And the burdens of the self-concocted Sharia and coercive commands of the religious calamity under which humanity was continuing to be subjugated. That is Rasul and this way helps to remove those burdens from them and breaks those chains of superstitions and obedience of forefathers which had shackled the human mind and heart. In this way bestows true freedom on man so that within the limits defined by Allah, through his own efforts and hard work, hard work to whatever heights he wishes to achieve. He could do so, there is no obstruction on, on his path. So important is that we should recognize all the change which man himself has created through the religious clergy. In fact, we have created even without religious clergy, all these chains which we see around us, which are hampering human psyche and as a result we are not getting the best out of us. We are living as far as this life is concerned, those people who think that what are the successes of this system, but there is nothing for them in the hereafter because they will never be able to achieve that self which Quran is, is drawing our attention to. Hence those people who have Iman and his Nabuvat and defend it by becoming an obstruction to the opponents of this message help in the establishment of this system and for this purpose make that light as, as the guiding torch which is sent to this messenger. These are the very people whose efforts will bear fruit and who will live a life of prosperity and success. So we have seen that uh, we have made, we are making that effort and essentially we have got rid of those chains. We have come to the simple direct message of the Quran and its guidance. Allah has become our model and we are trying to follow it to the best of our ability and within the constraints of the man-made system. But we exactly know what haq is and what bottle is. Verse 13, 6, which is the next one, accountability is very precise and tangible. This is something very interesting. The consequence of this same short-sightedness of theirs is that those who do not come to the Quran despite they are invited to its guidance. Rather than waiting for the pleasant and beautiful results of your endeavors to manifest before them, they demand from you that the destruction which you warn them about to bring it on quickly. 
So this is uh, something normal that uh, I have also come across people who say that uh, this you have been on this path for so long. What have you done? You haven't got success. And these kind of uh, questions and these kind of uh, rebuttals are primarily because they and they do not think that the path they are following is wrong. They have no knowledge of this that prior to them such accounts of the destruction of nations have passed by which have become fables in the world. And this is right in front of us. There is a decline of nations taking place right in front of our own eyes as well. In this connection, the law of your rub is that despite the inequities and injustices of the people, a respite is to be kept between the deed and its outcome, so that during this time period, those people who giving up the wrong path adopt the right path, the right one, they become protected from the impending destruction. So what Quran is saying is that we have purposely, that is Allah has pur purposely kept a time of respite between the time we commit a deed and by the time its results show up. And that is why death is also delayed. We have a pretty long period uh, to live in this life. So Quran is saying that within the time of respite, if they can come back to the guidance of the Quran, they will benefit. And at a collective le level, that is the sum total of all those uh, human beings who reside in a nation, they are the ones who provide strength to that nation or, or make it weak. Because their values, their coming to their their deeds together are going to decide when the decline will arrive. So this time of respite is the one which is which they think that uh, if these guys like us who are warning them, if we are right, why the punishment doesn't arrive quickly? But those people who do not take advantage of this respite period are destroyed. The fact is this that the law of requital of Allah happens to be very severe in pursuing deeds. We know it that whatever we do now, the effects are going to meet us up in the future, either earlier or later, depending on the severity of those deeds. Some reflections on human psyche and its proclivity to reject Hak. First one is human beings, when they acquire prosperity and power, for example, through inheritance, business, education, living in a powerful and rich country by chance, etc. We can add more methods to it. I just uh, illustrated it with few. They become unwilling to consider that all this can be lost. And it's very interesting. Those who are rich, they are less willing to listen to the Quran than the ones who are poor. Poor might be able to pay some attention, but rich are most of them, they reject it because they think that uh, what Quran is telling them is not going to happen. How can their power be lost or diluted? This is because the system in which they live provides them with visible and psychological strength. They think that since the system based on evidence before their eyes is not likely to decline within their lifetime, hence there is no need to think of any alternative to this system. Because essentially they don't see the theme and the scheme, they don't see the limitations and weaknesses of such a system and the injustices which the man-made system extends to other fellow human beings. With the passage of time, they also observe that people around continue to acquire wealth and success. Hence, how can all these be wrong? This is another very misconception. We think that if the majority is if most of the rich around us and powerful are benefiting, that how can they be wrong? So the Quran draws our attention and says it's not a question of they being right or wrong. It is we say that the Quran says what is haq is haq, even if the whole world does not follow it. And what is batal is batal, even if the whole world follows batal. So this is not a question of myself deciding what is batal and haq. It is what the Quran is deciding. And that is based on immutable laws. This then becomes the sole aim and purpose of their life. Many associate this worldly success of theirs to their God being very kind to them. And I've come across this, that where people who are rich, they think Allah is very kind to them, so that is why they are rich. This psyche prevents them from considering any alternative view. And this is the biggest obstacle of understanding the Quran, or coming to it and looking for the system of deal. Even those people who come to the Quran and once they start associating their worldly success in the capitalist system as being from Allah and as saying Hazam and Fadl Rabbi, then they are not going to come to the system of deen. They will never be able to develop their self for the system of deen. And that is certainly the last thing in this equation of theirs. The Quran here presents a few facts before us very clearly, i.e. while physical needs are essential, they must not be made the sole aim of our life. Those who make 
this their sole aim create problems for other fellow human beings in the world as this leads to the unjust distribution of wealth and resources here the quran points to the law of requital and the law of respite and invites those who reject this inequitable man made system towards the guidance of wealth next is verse 137 appealing to human rational mind wa yaqulu allazina kafaru laula unzila alayhi ayatun min rabbihi inna ma anta munzirun wa la kullu qawmin qad very interesting words a lot of uh, details covered in this these people who do not accept the truth of this code of laws do not in fact understand the significance of the law this is why they object that why does this messenger not demonstrate any visible miracle This is another point is that people expect miracles from someone who has come to the Quran and say that you don't have any force with you don't have any power to back you up. So what are you going to do? How are you going to change the system? How are you going to replace it? And then they move away instead of joining us, instead of coming to this platform and saying that we should put our efforts together as mu'minin so that our hearts come together and we become a unified force. They move away. because they don't see any point in in joining someone who does not have visible power behind him or her whereas your task is only to make them aware of this law of allah that if you remain on the wrong path then its consequences will be nothing but destruction and ruin next is then there is also another thing that if your message had only been for these people then the matter may have been different So over here quran says that this message at this point of course you are addressing the people around you but actually this word is for all times to come because the sulullah was rahmatullahi alayhi and the quran is from rabbul alamin so message is for all times because the book has been completed there is no more uh, revelation going to come towards human beings as far as this word is concerned but you have been sent as a guide for every nation present and future hence your responsibility is only this that you present the universal immutable laws of allah which are beyond the limits of time and space and we can figure it out as well because those values which are given in the quran they 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 are not related to any serial time that with time these will expire and by reflecting or reasoning in them every nation can gain guidance now over here kufr creates distractions in our life and we do not take it seriously some points coming out of uh, this verse it is hard for the human psyche to think about the potential consequences of their thoughts and deeds as they do, these do not materialize immediately the question may arise in our minds as those who have come to the quran why has so much time of respite been given to man in the functioning of the law of requital and these things do come to our mind and uh, we have uh, these have also been raised uh, in question time sessions sometimes the things which we should keep it in mind is that quran is asking us to train ourselves to train our intellect for all times to come to to do what is what the deen is asking us to do and for that patience is very important and over here i have touched that the quran repeatedly places emphasis on two fundamental points for example in surah yusuf if you remember as this yusuf said innahu man yattaqi wa yasbir that this has happened because of my or my own self and of course his father and his brother becoming muttaqi and then being sabir being patient being steadfast to become muttaqi and to keep manifesting sabr this is part of self development that once we have started to tread on sirat and mustaqim we have to have a firm conviction in our righteousness and our aim that this path will take us where it promises to take us this is part of allah being rab that he guides us towards the destination which he has spelled out in detail so the important point is that when the law of requital we see functioning very slowly and that is the way the quality of sabr is developing within us that is the way that is the time we have to develop the potential of being steadfast and not to give up because if sabr is not developed then we will never learn the functioning of the law of requital this is inbuilt in that so that is something which is important to note that once we have come to sirat al mustaqim this path is going to go into the hereafter then what is there for us to become impatient if i have come to the right path i know it will take time to take me to the destination then i should remain firmly on it 
rather than showing frustration or becoming becoming hopeless or, or getting into despair and sometimes even thinking of leaving the path. If we leave the path, hurt is going to be ours. It's, nothing will happen to Allah or other Mumini. The hallmark of this conviction is that we acquire the ability to remain patient and persevere. If we do not, then Allah does not need us for these responsibilities. Period. This is very important that Allah doesn't need us. Even Mumineen do not need. A lot of people have seen it even on this platform. People have left, gone somewhere else. Doesn't matter. Loss is their own. Their own. It's not a loss to Allah or to Tulu Islam. This is the reason that those who gave up easily end up achieving nothing in this life. And this is for sure that in the light of the Quran, I can assure you that they will end up losing. Leaving this path of the Quran means one is joining those who never even got onto this path in the first place. When they die, their regrets and disappointments based on the uncertainty about their hereafter becomes an evidence for them. So it is, there is nothing, no, when I put down these lines, it, I was not trying to gain any pleasure out of it. This is to remind our own selves that we should stay on Sirat and Mustaqeen and follow the example and the model of Surah Hazrat Yusuf in Nahuman Yat Yasbir. Next one is the Quranic path helps us to develop that potential like Hazrat Yaqub, which helps us to observe the events in our life differently and we evaluate these continuously in the light of the Quran. The fundamental aspect of this acquired potential is to be able to witness the functioning of the law of requital and the law of respite. Each expected consequence of some salih deed becomes a proof of our endeavors on this infinite path of our life. Now, the last two verses of uh, Surah Ar-Rad, 8 and 9, in the domain of creation, everything has defined scales. Very interesting verses. What Quran over here says is, Allah yalamu ma tahmilu kullu unsa wa ma tahidul arhamu wa ma tazdadu wa kullu shayin indahu bebekdar. We will go through this part in more detail. Alimul ghaibi wa shahadatil kabirul bakar. What has been noted above about an interval between a deed and its consequence, a glaring example of this is before them, how the interval between the conception of a child and its birth is inevitable. All this takes place according to Allah's knowledge, who knows what is within the abdomen of a female and what entity in the uterus keeps decreasing and what entity keeps increasing. That is from the birth of a child. Quran says that birth of a child also goes through a certain procedure. It takes time. Furthermore, which child reaches to its completion and which one does not reach to its completion. And all this is in the domain of physical laws. This all takes place according to those scales which have been defined by Allah. Next one is according to the scales of that Allah who knows what the existing condition is of something and through what stages it is going to pass through in the future, which one of its potentials have been manifested and which are still concealed. And this all follows laws and now we know through the modern medicine so much has been known now and has been discovered. His law is possessor of great powers and is established at the most exalted point, such an exalted point where the hand of no one can reach it to make any kind of change. So these laws are so established that human hands cannot reach it. If water is going to flow down a slope, it will always flow down the slope. If my deeds are going to have an impact on myself, it will, these will always have an impact on me. Nobody has an access to, 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 to changing this law and alteration in it. It is beyond the reach of everyone. Now, some points here, but the decree of Wakullo Shain in the Hube Makdarin points to be points to defined scaling. So this verse, this part of the verse points to defined scaling, which we need to figure out. And uh, part of this we have discussed previously as well. The Quran has pointed to the precise scaling functioning everywhere in the outer physical world and also within the human psyche. The issue before us is to look for this precise scaling through study and research in each and every issue of life confronting us in the world. When we say human psyche, then we mean the world which we have created around us based on decisions made through human choice and intent and all that is involved cognitively in making these decisions. This point will again come before us once we go to the next presentation under this surah. By quoting the example of human conception and birth, the Quran has drawn our attention to examine this process in detail and to not accept something which cannot be figured out. For example, if children have a congenital disability, then it is as per the law of cause and effect and to investigate the causes. 
So the Quran has very clearly said that if something goes wrong in your world, and and uh, you should not just sit idle and do nothing. Try to find out the cause for that. Whatever is happening, this world is under the control of human beings, and human beings the master of it, and they should they should figure out the cause of everything which is happening in our world. As noted before, in the domain of Khalq, man is put in charge of his affairs in this world and the knowledge of Wahi is also made available to him to provide answers to those questions which man could never figure out accurately on his own. But this man is clearly informed that his life has two parts, the physical part of his life and the life of his self. Both are intrinsically intertwined. And we know it and we can figure it out if there are any doubts anywhere. For the life of his self, he is invited to think and ponder deeply and then figure out that his self, based on his consciousness, cannot die with physical death. And it's very interesting. I just put down a few points here. For example, his perception of being ageless. Why we remain ageless at our thought level all along. Our thoughts do not go scale. They do not go over. The suspension of consciousness during sleep. We had gone through it previously in detail. The clear differentiation of the self based on Iman and Salih deeds from the one which does not do this. And we know it because we have been through this, that what kind of a self we had when we did not have Iman and we never did Salih deeds. And once now we do have Iman and we are doing Salih deeds, our self is totally transformed. The differences in the character and conduct of these two different selves. Now, here are some more points. The decree of Wakulla Shain in the Hube Mikdarin points to defined scaling. Root of Qadr, we have gone through it previously as well, but over here, just as a reminder, estimate, scale, measuring dimension, dimensions, comparing one thing with another, proportion, and the derivatives of Takbir, Mikdar, Qadr. Qadr means estimating something, and it could be volume, size, length, breadth. Etc. also means to have control and authority over something, applying reflection or reasoning to resolve an issue or to prepare and balance something, i.e. making decisions. And there is a lot more to it if we can look into Lugatul Quran. When the Quran states that Allah, in Allah, Allah kulli shayim kadeer, when the Quran says in some of the verses, then it is drawing our attention to the refined scales working behind everything in the world. Obviously, only humans can acquire the potentials to figure out these scales through the use of their intellect and reasoning. For example, for any event, we can inquire from a non-Quranic mind and a Quranic mind. Just for illustration, we can look at the events in the world and you ask people's opinion, they will give you different opinions. A Quranic mind will give you a different opinion. Most of the time, we'll be looking at it from the point of view of law of requital. And the interpretation is likely to be different. A Quranic mind, even for an obvious incident, will take into account the hereafter as well. In the second verse, that is 39, where a few divine attributes are quoted, Alimul Gaibe was Shahadatil Kabirul Mutad. The Quran is pointing to the ability of our consciousness to acquire these potentials and to be able to understand the strength which these provide us with. with to deal with the issues of our individual and collective life. So these are the ones which we should look at it. When Quran says Alimul Gaibe, that means through cause and effect, we can figure out which way the things are going, which way this Qadr is going, this scale is working. Shahadate, we should keep an eye on what is being presented right in front of us. al kabiru Mutal, which essentially means that we have to look at it from the Quranic point of view, the supremacy of Allah and its, uh, its uh, higher authority. And these are the issues which require our intellect's intense reflection. Briefly, for example, acquiring knowledge of the unseen, i.e. about causes and effects, using available evidence and applying it, working towards acquiring strength and power, aiming for superiority with a view to resolving issues of human world. And all these have to be focused. The world around us, which is full of problems, we should always stay motivated that I'm not going to accept these problems that something has to be done about it. And then look at the solutions which the Quran has uh, provided to us, discuss them together and remaining focused that this is possible to achieve. Finally, whatever we learn from the Quran, we need to bear in mind what is in it for myself and how does my psyche change in direct proportion. That is the other to its guidance.
And with that, we come to the end of this presentation. Thanks for your time and for sharing this presentation.